Your headlines, your campus, your voice. Presented by RMU students for RMU students. Join us as RMU Live begins now. Good evening. We begin with breaking news. An RMU student is dead. Just months after being elected homecoming queen, details are still coming in, but officials at RMU confirmed in an email to students and employees this afternoon that Amanda Workmeister died yesterday off campus. This happened around 4 p.m. yesterday. Workmeister was a senior hospitality and tourism management major here at RMU, set to graduate in just a few weeks. She graduated from Bethel Park High School and was an active member of the Delta Zeta sorority and was elected homecoming queen just this past fall. In an email sent out to this afternoon by RMU President Gregory DeLomo, Amanda was very well liked on campus and I know that many of you are having a difficult time coping with this loss as we all are. DeLomo went on to say the thoughts and prayers of the entire Robert Morris University go out to Amanda's family and friends. The official statement did not detail a cause of death. Crisis counselors and the campus ministry are available for those needing to, t to talk about the loss. Funeral arrangements are pending. Moving on to national news, it's official. President Barack Obama put pen to paper today and signed his sweeping health care reform legislation into law. It was a jubilant cer ceremony for the president and Democratic leaders who fought for passage of the bill. The East Room of the White House was filled with lawmakers and citizens who wanted to witness the event. The signing caps a political victory that gives Mr. Obama a place in history. It scales back its aspirations. We are not a nation that falls prey to doubt or mistrust. We don't fall prey to fear. We are not a nation that does what's easy. That's not who we are. That's not how we got here. We are a nation that faces its challenges and accepts its responsibilities. We are a nation that does what is hard, what is necessary, what is right. Here in this country, we shape our own destiny. That is what we do. That is who we are. That is what makes us the United States of America. And we have now just enshrined, as soon as I sign this bill, the core principle that everybody should have some basic security when it comes to their health care. Yeah. And it is an extraordinary achievement that has happened because of all of you and all the advocates all across the country. So thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. The House passed the reform bill on Sunday night. It had passed the Senate in December. Now the Senate must take up a reconciliation bill with amendments the House also passed on Sunday. Guilty. That's the verdict the jury handed down in the criminal trial against former state rep Mike Vion and two of his aides. Vion was convicted on 14 of the 59 counts against him, including conflict of interest, theft by deception, theft of services, and conspiracy. Also found guilty on related charges are Vion's former aides, Anna Marie Peretta Rosepink and Brett Cott, who are convicted for their involvement in a scheme to award more than $1.4 million in publicly owned bonuses to state workers in exchange for work on campaigns between 2004 and 2006. Vion, Peretta, Rosepink, and Cott will be sentenced on May 21st. State Democrats are expected to give a final approval to Governor Ed Rendell's $29 billion fiscal budget proposal for 2010-2011. This final push for the approval for an increase of roughly $1 billion in the State House has some re Republicans crying foul. State Republicans claim that raising the state budget by $1 billion is far too much considering state incomes are lagging in revenues. If the budget is passed into law, it will ha have been 100 days until the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. This would be a stark contrast to last year when the fiscal policy was not signed into law until early October. Coming up after the break, a controversial activist group disbands and will Google remain in China? Plus, the rain is back and the pens face off against Detroit. We have the latest in weather and sports when we come back. But first, here's a look at what happened on this day in history. Shine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream of? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. I bring 
bring you arts enriched raisin brahms, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the art! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Ever think about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fairy. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Yes, ready, ready. Come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. According to U.S. military intelligence, Iran is training Taliban fighters within its borders. U.S. officials had speculated the Taliban were receiving training in Afghanistan from the Iranians. However, it has just come to light that Taliban fighters have been trained in small arms combat within Iran's borders. Our Army Lieutenant Colonel Edward Schultes said Monday, We've known for some time that Iran has been a source for both material and trained fighters for Taliban elements in Afghanistan. End quote. The community activist group ACORN announced today it's closing its doors for good. The reason? There's just not enough money coming in. According to a statement, the group's remaining state affiliates and field offices will close by April 1st and a plan will be developed to pay its debts. The Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now has recently been hit with several accusations of scandal and fraud. Six months ago, a pair of conservative ac activists posed as a pimp and prostitute, secretly videotaping their interaction with ACORN employees. The tape shows employees offering advice about setting up a prostitution ring and evading the IRS. Those employees were fired, and Congress halted federal grants to the organization. Just a few weeks ago, prosecutors cleared the group of criminal wrongdoing related to the videos. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and other top U.S. aides are in Mexico tonight, meeting with Mexican President Felipe Calderon to discuss drug trafficking and border security. This comes in light of recent violence against both Mexican and American tourists. It's estimated that 16,000 people have died since December 2006 when President Calderon declared war on violent drug cartels, predominantly in the city of Juarez, which is across the border from El Paso, Texas. There is enough evidence for a grand jury to hear the murder case of our Amy Bishop, the University of Alabama professor accused of opening fire on her colleagues in February. Authorities say that Bishop killed three and injured three more at a faculty meeting on February 12th. Bishop is charged with capital murder and attempted murder and is now awaiting trial. It's Google versus the Great Firewall of China, and the Internet Titan has just raised the ante in its standoff with Beijing over Internet censorship. Google has dropped filters that blocked information seen as critical of China. It's now redirecting traffic to Google's uncensored Hong Kong site. The company says it will continue to develop its wider business operations on the mainland, including sales. Beijing says Google's decision is totally wrong, and the company has broken its promises to the government. Was the Israeli government involved in a plot to kill an Arab Hamas leader? British Foreign Secretary David Miliband believes so. Miliband says that the Israeli government forged British passports of those who killed Mahmoud al-Mabhu, a founding member of Hamas's military wing, who was found dead in Dubai in January. The British government has fired an Israeli diplomat as a result of the scandal. Now, I don't know, I'm sure you've been outside today, but we had a really, really nice stretch of nice, warm, oh, sunny weather. It was and lovely. And today, it just came to a screeching halt. Uh, well, I, I hope that in the future we'll be getting some better weather, hopefully this week. I guess we'll just have to go over to Channing and see how it's going to look. Channing?
Well, a screeching halt is a good way to describe it. You know, that cold front that moved through last night, it brought us some rain showers, a little bit of thunder if you were, were lucky in a couple of places. Nothing too severe except for in Easter Ohio, we had some reports of hail. But right now, it looks like we're not going to be seeing any thunderstorms in the near future. 48 degrees for our new current high temperature at this hour. We, we were actually at a high of 72 degrees yesterday, so big difference there. Dew points at 35 degrees, our humidity is at 68%, pressure is at 30.2 inches, and the winds are out of the northwest at 11 miles per hour, which is bringing that nice cooler air. I, I guess I shouldn't call it nice, but it is cooler. 46 in Beaver Falls for your temperature right now, 40, 59 in Burgettstown, and if we take a look at Butler, 48 degrees and 48 degrees here in Pittsburgh as well. And if we take a look at a wider perspective of the eastern, eastern half of the country, you can see we have 50 up in Detroit, 43 in Cleveland, 41 in Erie. That's the cool spot for the day. 53 out in Fort Wayne and for tonight you can expect to see those showers continue to move out through the area as a low pressure system begins to exit up toward the northeast. Our low temperature will be 36 degrees and for our almanac today you can see we reached a high of actually 50 degrees. Our low of 35 this morning. Our normals for, for this time of year 52 and 32. So though it is chilly out there it is right where we should be for this time of year. Our forecast for tomorrow looks like this 56 degrees and sunny skies will be returning with some high pressure that's moving into the area throughout the rest of this week and for the Frampton 5 day forecast you can see temperatures rebound to 57 degrees for Thursday with sunny skies slight chance of showers for Friday with a high temperature of 51 and partly cloudy skies on Saturday with a high temp of 50 degrees and you know if you want to get out and enjoy the nice weather it would be a good chance to get out head over to the Massey Theater we're going to have RMU Colonial Theaters of Mice and Men opens tomorrow night at 8 p.m. You can buy tickets at the Student Life Office for $5. So let's take a look and see how they're coming together with this. RMU's Colonial Theater is still working hard at putting up its latest production of Mice and Men, directed by Professor Barbara Burgess Lefevre. We are starting a program. We started it last year where we try to do a show every spring that will appeal to high school, middle school audiences. I chose this one because my research told me that 80% of high school students are required to read of mice and men. With John Steinbeck's unique writing strategy, this play has transcended the 20th century and provides a unique story for high school and college students alike. The story also provides new opportunities for RMU students to grow as actors. Uh, I really enjoy being a part of this because this is the first show I've been a part of that really emphasizes the acting, which it should because it's a play, but it's, it's really allowed me to work on that aspect of my uh, creative self, I suppose. As far as unique opportunities, the one actress in the show is playing double duty in the world of theater. I'm actually in two shows right now. I'm in Joseph at Pittsburgh Musical Theater, and then I'm also in this show of Mice and Men. And at first it was really hard because I had to balance between the two rehearsals. So it really was a challenge, but I think I rose to it and I think I did a good job. RMU's Of Mice and Men opens this Wednesday at 8 p.m. in Massey Theater. You can still get your tickets in the RMU Student Life Office at a discount of $5 if you're an RMU student. Tickets for the public are on sale for $10. For RMU Live, this is Channing Frampton. All right, thanks to Channing Frampton for that package. Coming up in sports, the Pens face off against the Wings in Motown. Pitt faces Xavier in the NCAA tourney. And an update on the Ben Roethlisberger and Tiger Woods situations as well. That's all after the break. So gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <sighs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that's so girl wearing a skirt as a top. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. With the university going through some budget cuts and some fiscal responsibility, we here at CSC have been asked to tighten up our belts as well. And the Colonials are taking on Monmouth next Saturday afternoon. And in other football news, former running back Devin Wilson of the Colonials has decided to... But I think we're going to be all right. 
busy offseason, getting himself elected to a local football hall of fame. But now the Robert Morris coach is focused on the Colonials' regular season as they kick off a 2006 campaign. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the U.S. and European pro golf tours? One in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice? One in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Last time that the Pittsburgh Penguins were in the friendly confines of Joe Louis Arena, they were leaving with Lord Stanley's Cup. 280 some days later, they were back, holding second place in the Eastern Conference with the Red Wings in eighth in the West, fighting for a playoff spot, and one team was clearly hungrier than the other. To Joe Louis Arena we go for the highlights. Just 30 seconds in, Sidney Crosby down the wing. Jimmy Howard snares that one out of the air, one of his 26 saves on the evening. Second period, now 1-0 wings. Henrik Zetterberg is going to get off the first backhander. That's stopped, but if at first you don't succeed, try again. That makes it 2-0. Detroit then in the third after Pascal Dupuis scored for the Penn. Zetterberg with a snapshot mark under Fleury, oh dear. Hanks second on the night, 3-1 wings, and we've got cephalopods on the ice. End of the game now. Wings win 3-1, and after Crosby and Zetterberg did some jousting, everyone gets involved, including Jimmy Howard. That glove doesn't smell too good. They would be broken up eventually. Zetterberg finished with two goals and an assist. Fleury did have 30 saves in the losing effort. Wings go on to win 3-1. We all know by now that the Colonials were barely beaten by the Villanova Wildcats in the NCAA tournament on Thursday, leaving the number three Pitt Panthers as the only remaining team from the Pittsburgh area to be in the tourney. They took on the number six Xavier Musketeers on Sunday evening, hoping to advance to the Sweet 16. So to Milwaukee we go to check out the highlights. Musketeers lead after the first half and it continues in the second. Terrell Holloway gets the jumper to go and the foul. Made the free throw as well. 57-49 Xavier. Now two minutes remaining. Jason Love with the block on Brad Wanamaker and it's Jordan Crawford the other way with the fast break. Dunk Musketeers by seven. But Pitt does not go away. 22 seconds to go. Gilbert Brown will pull up and sink the three to pull Pitt to within three. Now 71-66. Ten seconds to go in the game now. Trevon Woodall coast to coast drives to the lane gets the layup to fall pit back to within three and now with point four to go on the clock same score Ashton Gibbs off the inbound for the Panthers with a three to tie it's short Xavier hangs on 71 68 is the final Ashton Gibbs finished with 19 for the Panthers Pitt joins the Colonials as their season comes to an end Xavier on to the sweet 16 those games will begin Thursday evening on CBS that was what uh, we are concerned that Ben continues to put himself in this position. Uh, I have spoken to the Steelers. I've spoken to Art Rooney directly about it. And uh, at the appropriate time, I'll be meeting with Ben. I think it's safe to say that uh, all of us are held to an extremely high standard. Uh, it's a privilege to be a part of the National Football League, both players and coaches, uh, front office personnel for that matter, everyone. Um, it's very sensitive. Um, opportunity and uh, you know we gotta we gotta tote the luggage that comes with it. Do you feel like that was what NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin had to say over the past two days regarding the recent sexual assault allegations that have come against Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Tomlin opened up this morning to reporters for almost 30 minutes revealing that Roethlisberger actually called him just two hours after he found out that he was being accused of sexual assault. Tomlin was also asked if the Steelers would be looking for a new quarterback in the near future. He said it's too early to think about adding another quarterback. Now to Tiger Woods. Tiger gave his first interviews this weekend since crashing his car back in November and admitting to multiple transgressions. Woods was asked what happened on the night of the crash. He simply said that it is a private matter between him and his wife, Elon. Woods was also asked what kind of reception he is expecting from fans when he returns to golf. He says, quote, I hope there will be a couple of claps. Wood will be playing in the Masters coming up in April. Well, thanks, Brooke. And 
Brooks, and that is all the time we have for you this evening. Don't forget to get the latest in sports with Colonial Sports Center this Thursday at 9.30. And we'll see you back here one week from tonight, Tuesday at 5.30, for the next RMU Live. Have a great night.